My husband's mom moved in with us a week ago. The minute we were informed she was going to move in, temporarily till her house gets renovated, we emptied a room specifically for her. It has everything. A bed with a frame, curtains, mounted TV, wardrobe, etc. She was thrilled with it and loved it. One day I came home and found her in my bedroom, sleeping in my and my husband's bed. I was confused, but she told me she'd taken a nap on the bed and lost track of time. Since then, she started talking about how she loved the nap there and started hinting at wanting to take naps in our bedroom from now on. I kept ignoring her comments till my husband sat me down and told me that his mom really liked and got used to napping in our bedroom and we should just let her have her daily afternoon nap in the room. I said, absolutely not, and we started debating. Finally, I told him his mom was ridiculous because she had a whole room upstairs where she could nap. He got upset and said I was making his mom feel uncomfortable and unwelcome with this attitude. I said no and refused to negotiate. He called me selfish and mean for saying no and preventing his mom from feeling uncomfortable at his house. But I reminded him that I pay the full mortgage for the house while he blows money over gadgets and consoles. He accused me of bringing old disagreements in this current conflict against him. I said no and he should stop pushing because I need the room when I get home feeling exhausted from working on my feet from 6am. He's refusing to speak to me till I agree and let his mom have a nap in there. Am I the idiot for choosing this hill to die on, as he says? Am I being difficult? Not the idiot. Die on this hill. I would hate it if someone napped in my bed. My bedroom is my sanctuary. Get a lock for your bedroom door if you must, but this is ridiculous. And tell your husband to grow up. Your problem is not with the mother-in-law. I think you already know that it's with your husband. He needs to support you in your dealings with his family, but instead of doing that, he's making the situation worse. You're already hosting his mother. She's lucky enough to have her room when most people don't even have spare rooms. If there's a problem with her room, your husband must fix it so she's comfortable, but she cannot take over your room. Your room is private and off limits. Honestly, I'd move my stuff into the spare room and her stuff into her husband's bedroom. Then, if he wants to share a bed with his mother, he can share a bed with his mother. Your husband is not only behaving destructively by refusing to support you and creating unnecessary drama, he's not speaking to you like he's in high school. He is being very immature. I don't lightly recommend counselling because it's expensive and hard to find a good counsellor, but he won't listen to you. So I think you need it at this point. Maybe a third party can get through to him. What he's doing is damaging your relationship. OP's husband, this is my house. This stood out to me too as a bad sign. He doesn't see the OP as having any status in her own house. I try not to tell people to dump the person automatically, but I have a niggling feeling that that's what this OP should do to save herself a lot of drama. OMG, as someone with an idiot for a mother-in-law myself, I spent your entire post cringing and shouting from the side of the laptop screen. Boot his mum out of your house and send your hubby with her if they both keep prioritising someone who pays zero bills Comfort over yours, the one who owns the home. I'm a mother of twins, 19 female. Their dad and I split up six years ago and I'm now married to my husband, Kevin. Problem is, Kevin thinks that my girls are not disciplined as they don't follow everything he tells them because they don't see him as their father. We've already talked about that. Especially the parts where he expects them to dress how he wants them to and behave how he wants them to. He even called them weirdos, but that's how teenagers are and it's not a new thing. Anyways, I told him he needed to loosen up a little and lessen his expectations of them, but I guess it's hard to do given that he was brought up in a conservative household with a hardcore Christian family. Last week, he started a fight after seeing one of the girl's hairstyles and said she looked trashy. Because of this, we had to cancel our trip to the mall because he refused to drive us. A couple of days ago, we wanted to go out for dinner. I intended to get off work at 6 but had some stuff to do. My husband and I agreed that he'd take the girls and go to the restaurant and wait for me there. He called me before they left the house to complain about the girls' clothes. The girls sent me pics, and I thought nothing was wrong with their outfits and told him to drop it and go. He said fine, then muttered something about me enabling them, then hung up. While I was still at work, I got a call from one of the girls telling me their stepdad had them stand and wait outside the restaurant because he didn't want to be seen with them dressed like that. I was stunned. I rushed to the restaurant and found them near the car. They explained he told them to wait in the car till he told them to come in, basically wait for me. They started crying. I had them get in my car, then went inside the restaurant and found him on his phone. 
I went off on him and told him he should be ashamed of himself for treating my daughters like if there was something to be ashamed of. He tried back paddling, saying it wasn't like that, but I interrupted him and then walked out after cancelling dinner. We went home and he came back hours later trying to argue that I can't blame him for disapproving of the girl's recklessness and that he tried communicating, but I shut him down and treated him as less of a parent when he just wants what's best for them. He doesn't speak to me or the girls anymore. You are the idiot for marrying someone who treats your daughters like this. Of course they don't see him as a dad. They're adults and he hasn't even been around six years. He cannot just have expected to marry you and suddenly gain two obedient robots. That isn't how it works. Your choice, but if you let this continue, your girls won't stick around for any longer than they need to. How the heck was he able to cancel a trip to the mall because he refused to drive? OP clearly can drive and has a car based on the post, so did she seriously agree to cancel the trip to appease him? That would be utterly bananas. Don't be so desperate for a relationship that you'll tolerate your kids being treated like crap. Cut this controlling dude out of all your lives. You realize that his real issue is that he sees two attractive young women and is attracted. His knee-jerk reaction is to control them and their bodies to make himself more comfortable. The lack of respect here for you, your daughters, and your family speaks volumes. It's time for this man to be an ex-husband. Totally agree that he's attracted to them. Double yuck. You are the idiot because you don't prioritize your daughters and their safety and for what you've already passively allowed because you certainly haven't been doing enough to protect them so far. My 28 female and my husband, 34, married two days ago. My mother and stepfather walked me down the aisle. Backstory, my father, 48, and my mother, 47, had me when they were very young. Unfortunately, they were in conflict for the first couple of years of my life, and my dad ended up leaving us. My mom went through a court case and ended up getting full custody of me, which wasn't that hard as my dad was nowhere to be found. A year after getting custody of me, my mum met my stepdad, 50, and fell for him immediately. They dated for a couple of years and then eloped. My stepdad legally adopted me and we were one happy family. When I was 15, my mother told me that my birth father had contacted her and was trying to get in contact with me. She told me I didn't have to meet him if I didn't want to, but she thought it would be good for me to know my father. So, I decided to meet with him, and he explained that at the time he wasn't financially stable enough to take care of me and it was draining his mental health, which is why he left. However, I forgave him as he still is my father, and I wanted a relationship with him. I started meeting with him once a week and building an okay relationship. I still wasn't 100% sure about him, but I wanted to give him a second chance. When I went to university, my dad and I grew out of touch a bit, and I would only see him a couple of times a year, but I always had a relationship with him. Skip to three months ago, my fiancé proposed to me and I was over the moon. I called my mother and stepdad immediately and told them and they were ecstatic for me. I asked them at a dinner a week later if they could walk me down the aisle and if my stepdad could give me away. They said yes and my stepdad was so thrilled that I thought of him that he cried when I asked him. A few days later, my dad called me fuming. I'm just going to write how the conversation went. Him. How could you not tell me sooner? As your father, I have a right to know first. Do you know how embarrassing it is that I found out at the same time as some random friend of your fiancé? Me. I only told a few people and that was because these people were in the wedding ceremony and therefore needed to find an outfit quicker than the people I sent the invites to. Pause. Him. But I'm walking you down the aisle. I'm at the wedding ceremony. Me. My mom and Josh, stepdad, are walking me. Him. You're supposed to be walked by your father, not some tramp your mom found on the street. Me? He's not some tramp, he's legally my father. He adopted me while you were God knows where after you left me, so he's more of a father than you ever were and ever could be. He hangs up. He responded to the wedding invite with a cannot attend and hasn't spoken to me since. I don't know what to do as I want him in my life, but should I have just let him walk me down the aisle? Not the idiot. His reaction says everything about him. It's not about you. He can't take back those life choices or redo all the missed years. He now sees the consequences and they hurt. That's his problem, not yours. I think your dad is confusing your guy's reconciliation with being an actual father. Just because you guys are on good terms, of course, does not mean he's entitled to do fatherly things, for obvious reasons. And I think that's where he's mistaken. It's not your fault he's mistaken, and if he's hurt, that's not on you either. It's on him for having the warped expectation of suddenly being a father just because you guys are cordial. He's being very immature and entitled.
Why do you want him in your life? Honestly, has he ever done anything for you? Has he ever gone out of his way to make you feel like a priority in your life? Has he ever made up for all the missed child support payments? Or is he just the kind of person who wants to have a kid but doesn't want any of the responsibilities of having a kid? Because, honestly, he sounds like a sad little person afraid of dying alone and not having anyone who will look out for him or take care of him. So, he decided to demand a relationship with his kid. My boyfriend was buying his first car from a dealership. He asked if I could do the talking since I bought a few cars, so I got to work. I found several dealerships in the area selling the car he wanted and asked him to get a bank loan to cover the cost. I called them all on recorded lines and started price negotiations on the phone. Then I called the best ones back a few extra times, made sure I talked to a different person, and asked all about their taxes and fees. Surprised, they changed every call. My boyfriend hadn't been involved in the process till the day we went to test drive our first pick. In the middle of the test drive, I did a full mechanical inspection, marked every issue and priced out the repair. During this, the dealer called my boyfriend, asked how long we'd be out, and he was kind of stressed. When we returned, I started negotiating along the lines of, the price we agreed on was for a car you said was in good condition, but this needs all this work. It took a while and the dealer got irritated about arguing every mechanical flaw, but he did end up lowering the price a lot. He kept pushing to talk about financing, which I had been stalling on, so I started pretending to be considering a long-term loan to negotiate further down the purchase price. He said he couldn't go any lower on the purchase price, so I suggested my boyfriend and I leave for lunch and talk it over. At the dinner, I asked my boyfriend just to let me do the talking because sometimes an awkward silence works wonders. When we were at the diner, we got a call back that they could go lower, so we returned to the dealership and said we'd do it. We were taken to the finance office. They were irritated when they found out my boyfriend already had a loan. They'd given us that price assuming we'd take their financing. I held firm that we'd agreed on a price in writing and it was not conditional on financing. Then, when it got to the extra fees, they'd inflated them for me. So I pulled out the recording of the cheapest set of costs an employee promised me. They got irritated, and I stayed firm, saying I was willing to walk away if they were going to bait and switch me. So we got it, but the dealer and the finance guy were very cold and rushed us out after closing. Immediately after we left the dealership, my boyfriend got upset with me, and he said that it was the most uncomfortable thing ever, that I had been a witch, and he didn't know I'd argue all day with them. He was so stressed when we were sitting there in tense silence, waiting for the other to fold first. I got frustrated and snapped at him because I felt like I'd done a lot of work at his request and he wasn't appreciative. Am I the idiot for how I negotiated the price of my boyfriend's car? Not the idiot. Women, generally speaking, already feel reluctant to negotiate compared to how comfortable men are with it. Also, car dealerships try to pull the wool over on women buyers, so good for you for making your voice heard. He asked you to negotiate the best possible price you could. What did he think was going to happen? You'd show up and the dealership would roll over for you. It sounds like you did exactly what was asked and did it exceedingly well. Congratulations, and I'm in awe of your negotiating prowess. Right, and if the boyfriend wanted to chicken out and just be nice and pay more money, he could have done that at any time. Instead, he let OP do all the work and then complained once it was all done and he got his car. Oh my god, I love it. I would die for a partner that would do all the talking for me, and not just that, but do it so well that I walked away with a benefit. I'd be forever grateful. Seriously, I can't believe the boyfriend is mad that OP did too good of a job helping him. What does he think happened here? Weaponized competence. OP should think twice before doing him such a big favor again. He sounds ungrateful. I, 41 male, and my wife, 38, have three kids, toddler, pre-tween, and tween. We also have a nephew, 20 on my side, and a few nieces and nephews on her side. Every summer, we go on a wilderness adventure, but four years ago, we were a bit worried about being overwhelmed with a newborn and two other kids. I asked my nephew, then 16, if he would like to come on vacation with us. The deal would be that my wife and I pay for everything, and he babysits the older kids when they want to do an activity, but we need to chill with the baby. Nephew agreed, and the trip was a smashing success. We were so happy with how things turned out that we repeated the arrangement every following year. Having an extra set of hands has made our vacations more of a vacation. My wife's oldest niece is a teenager, and her mom expected us to bring her on our vacation, but we didn't. Our niece is a great kid, but doesn't have a driver's license yet, isn't good with kids, and isn't much interested in physical activity. 
I'm sure she would have had fun looking at the beautiful scenery and swimming in the springs, but her presence wouldn't decrease our workload and would have significantly increased the cost of our vacation. Not to mention, it would set an unaffordable precedent for our other nieces and nephews. We returned yesterday, and my sister-in-law has made some passive-aggressive posts on social media. Even my mother-in-law, with whom I have a great relationship, said she's disappointed that I didn't think about my niece's feelings. I do care about my niece, and I would have taken her if it wasn't so expensive, but I don't feel like we were obligated to take her. Am I the idiot? Let's reframe this. You hired your nephew to be a nanny on your vacation because he was a good fit and super qualified. Your niece isn't qualified, so you don't owe anyone a free vacation. Not the idiot. Perfectly said. Also, you can't expect someone to take your child on vacation for free. If anything, the niece's parents should have offered to pay for her, but even then, OP is in the right to say no. It's funny how often others seem to so freely want to spend money that doesn't belong to them. You are the idiot. You've been taking your nephew for three or four years now, and I'm sure your niece has said something about that. What have you and her mom been telling her about why she hasn't been going? Did you lead her on in any way when she was younger, or did she just make the assumption she was going when she was old enough? sister-in-law made up a narrative in her head. If your niece did go and hated the trip, guess who would be bad-mouthing you all over social media? Explain to them your nephew is with you because he has a job that he's great at and you're going to employ him until he's not interested anymore, at which point you probably won't need the help anymore.